Welcome. Welcome to worship at Newton Presbyterian Church. I'm Ward Holder, the pastor at Newton Presbyterian Church, and I welcome you to this time of worship of our living God, whether you're joining us for the first time or the 700th time, it doesn't matter. Our God invites all. One announcement before we begin the service. Newton Presbyterian Church is beginning an arts program and we welcome submissions from artists of all kinds to help us expand the ways that we are talking about and understanding our God. For more information, go either to the bulletin where there's a fuller announcement or to the church's website or Facebook. Now, let us join together in the worship of the living God. Good morning and welcome to worship at Newton Presbyterian Church on this Palm Sunday. Please join me in the call to worship, which is found in your bulletin and also on the screen. Tell to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you. He comes humble and mounted on a colt, as told by the prophets. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please join with me in singing hymn number 88, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. service when we are invited to come before the Lord and confess our sins. 
Let us do this together by reading the prayer of confession found in the bulletin, and we will follow that by a period of silent prayer. Forgive us, most gracious God, what we have done to increase the pain of the world. Pardon every unkind word, every impatient gesture, every hard and selfish deed. Forgive our failure to show sympathy and offer kindly help when we had the opportunity or failed to seek it. Enable us so to live the rest of our lives that we may daily endeavor to lessen the burden of human sorrow and add to the sum of blessedness, both in our own lives and in the lives touched by us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. This statement is completely reliable and can be trusted in every instance. Christ Jesus came to save sinners. While we were yet in sin, Christ was born for us. Christ lived for us. Christ suffered and died for us. Christ rose for us. Today, Christ is praying to the Father for us. Brothers and sisters, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And as forgiven people, we are freed to live new and better lives, freed from the powers of sin and death. And our best guide to that life comes to us in the law of our God. They came to Jesus and said, What is the great commandment? He said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and all your strength. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two depend all the law and the prophets. We know that when we are following these, we are walking in the footsteps of our God. It's time for the passing of the peace. We miss this in our virtual space. So at this time, would you please text or email someone from the congregation to let them know that you're thinking of them and next week choose someone else. Peace be with you. Now let your voices join with ours 
and anthems raise. Hosanna, glory to God. Blessed is he who comes bringing salvation. At the sound, have now regained that freedom sought in vain. Humanity shall everywhere abound, for light to all the world is given again. All nations see. And chant his praise. Now let your voices join with ours and anthems raise. Hosanna, glory to God. Blessed is he who comes bringing salvation. ourselves to hear God's word in the scriptures, let us prepare our hearts and minds through prayer. Gracious and loving God, grant us your Holy Spirit. Give us that same spirit that inspired your prophets and apostles. Give us that spirit that testifies in our inmost being that your word is the truth. Give us your spirit and through it, guide our reading and understanding and lead us always home to you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our responsive reading this morning comes from Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and also 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Please join me with hymn 91, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty.
readings for the sermon this morning come to us from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, reading the second chapter, the 5th through 11th verses, and Mark's gospel, the 11th chapter, the first 11 verses. Listen for the word of the Lord. Let that same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And from Mark's Gospel. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and he said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden, Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Simply tell them the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying a colt? They said, they told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. And may the Lord add a rich blessing to our hearing and understanding of this God's holy word. Amen. Palm Sunday comes. And I have to admit that if we know anything about this story, it's a little crazy. In fact, it's crazy and a little bit dangerous. Jesus sends a couple of disciples into town and says, go take a colt without paying for it. And if anyone says, what are you doing? Just tell them the Lord has need of it. Most of the places I've lived, I've never lived near Jerusalem, but most of the places I've lived, they would call that Stealing. The taking without payment or arrangement. And then Jesus rides it. Now, we're so different from the culture that Jesus lived in. There People were very used to being around farm animals. Uh, my church, no one does. In fact, my first call to ministry 
was in Wisconsin, and that was a farm church. And the very last farmer who was working the fields had just retired. Retired meant that he only had about 20 milk cows still going. Otherwise, what would you do when you got up at 4.30 in the morning? So we don't understand how silly what Jesus is doing is frequently. We don't, it's not automatic in our minds that if you get on a colt that no one has ridden, he won't like that. He won't like it at all, and, and the greatest number of things that are going to occur is probably you're going to make a sudden and sharp meeting with the ground. Of course, Jesus wasn't just doing this. Zechariah 9 had promised that the king would come in riding on a foal no one had ridden. And, and the Israelites, or the Jews of the first century, they get it. They see him, they see what he's riding, they see the town he's riding into, and they immediately start viewing him as a king. That's that whole, blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. <coughs> they knew. And they were excited. That tells us why the people were excited, but... It doesn't tell us why Jesus did it. So to that we look in Paul who gave this answer. He told the Philippians, have this mind in you that was in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be exploited or grasped or held on to. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant or slave so he could be obedient. This is a famous passage, every seminarian learns it. It's called the kenotic Christology. The, the, and kenosis in Greek simply means emptying. And Jesus emptied himself so he could serve. And that becomes a model of the Christian life. Are we willing to empty ourselves of the things that keep us from serving? Are we, like Jesus, eager to obey God? There are three classical theological term for them is atonement theories, but Atonement is simply a part of salvation. These are how Jesus saves us theories. And one is that Jesus conquers the power of sin and death. Maybe the devil. And another is by taking our place on the cross, Jesus pays a price, pays the price we owe. But the third theory is that Jesus shows us how to be truly human. 
shows us what it means to be a human in right relationship with God. One who spends his days loving people, serving people, helping people, day in, day out, until the end of his life. And whenever I think of this, this theory, I'm reminded of the Epiphany hymn, Once in Royal David's City. And there's a line in that old and beautiful hymn that says, Jesus is our childhood's pattern. Day by day, like us, he grew. And as so frequently happens, the hymn writer is even more profound than he knows. Jesus is showing us how to live the Christian life, how to live in reaction to God, how to live a life of excited obedience. In two weeks, we have seen two horrific shootings. So far as we know, there's no reason yet for the shooting in Boulder. The shooting in Atlanta, the young man believed that he had a sexual addiction and that the best thing to do would be to kill the Asian women. We have a lot of work to do. We need to see serving people as our life's work. That needs to be the point of our lives and everything else is in support of that. I got a job so I would get enough money so I can serve people. I got a career that allows me to serve people. I got you know, I won the lottery. Now I can go and serve people. And when we serve people, we are being obedient to God. We are having that mind in us that was in Christ Jesus. And that, to answer those ancient Jews who clamored over Jesus entry into Jerusalem. That is when the true kingdom of our ancestor David comes in. When this king teaches us
how desperately important it is for us to be obedient to God and to love and serve the people we are around. It's Palm Sunday, I know, it's the beginning of Holy Week. And I would never denigrate the sacrifice of Jesus' death on the cross. But it is just as important for believers not to denigrate his life in service to God, a life we are to imitate. Let that be our task, not only Holy Week, but through every day of our lives. Amen. Now let us continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings. Here at Newton Presbyterian Church, we have a secure online giving program. The link is on the screen. We also have an app you can use on your phone. We still take checks. We invite you to return a portion of the gifts that God has given us to the service of our living God. As we prepare to pray, there are prayer concerns before us. I've noted it before, I will note it again. Our country is deeply divided, and divided in ways where it is difficult for many people to see the face of Christ in the face of another with whom they disagree. We need to pray. This week we passed 247,000 deaths in America due to COVID-19. We need to pray. Finally, we, we are in the aftermath of two more huge mass shootings. Eight people in Atlanta, ten in Boulder, we need to pray. I want to be clear. If we cannot, as believers, come to some resolution of this matter, if we cannot do something beyond offering thoughts and prayers, then we do not care. We simply see the loss of life, whether it is Asian immigrants, or kindergartners, or people at a grocery store, or people in a church, or people in a Bible study, or people in all walks of life that they are not worthy of our care. They are not worthy for us to love them more 
than owning a gun. I don't know what the right solution is. I do know that when politicians choose again and again and again not, not to do anything, it is a sign that they're satisfied and that America is satisfied with the situation we have. And since I believe in a God of life, that's unacceptable. We need to pray. People of God, let us come together to worship our God through prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask for your strength. We ask for your intervention. We ask for your love. We ask that your spirit would make all of those interventions live in our hearts in such a way that it changed our lives. Lord, we are, we are divided. And our divide, division has reached the point of hatred. We need you to heal us. Because clearly, politicians seem to believe that there is more to be gained from division than seeing each other as brothers and sisters bound together in one unbroken garment of destiny. Lord, heal us. Lord, we, we are suffering from a pandemic. And yes, millions of people are getting vaccinated, but our number of cases is going up. And the number of deaths per week is stubbornly high. Lord, we need your intervention. We need you to guide our national and international and community leaders to make wise decisions rather than those which are expedient. We need your intervention. We need your healing touch. We need you to inspire both our researchers who are trying to find a cure and our front line all the way to the last line of people who are trying to keep us well. Lord, we lift up our desire to have the power which you claim for yourself, the power of life and death. Lord, act in people's hearts so that this ever-rising death toll would matter. Lord, all these things and so many others we bring to you in the name and for the sake of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us affirm our faith, saying together the Apostles' Creed, which is found streaming on the screen and printed in the bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us join together in our final hymn, number 89, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. same mind that it was in Christ Jesus to be humble and obedient to God and to find our greatest joy in that. And now may the grace, mercy, and peace of the triune God, creator, redeemer, and spirit that moves among us be with us all, both now, henceforth, and forevermore, world without end. Amen.
as we continue worship, I encourage you all to spread our ministry through our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Search us at Newton Presbyterian Church. That is Newton Presbyterian Church. Please like our pages, subscribe, and also follow us. Book of Mark 16, 15 says, And he said to them, Go into the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. I, I encourage us all to do the same. Thank you.